Welcome back to Recap Scenes. Get your popcorn ready because in today's video we'll run through another sci-fi thriller film, The Darkest Minds. Ruby Daly was around 10 years old when she first saw how the idiopathic adolescent acute neurodegeneration disease Ian took a child's life. Grace Summerfield, Ruby's friend and classmate, was sharing a table with Ruby in her school cafeteria when the Ian attacked. Ruby witnessed Grace's hand shaking tremendously. She saw her completely zoned out, and after a few seconds, the young Grace tumbled to the ground and was declared dead on the spot. After a month, almost all of her classmates were dead. News about the contagious disease affecting 90% of the children spread quickly all over the US, and the US president's son, Clancy Gray, was not excused. Though affected by the disease, Clancy managed to survive. He was cured. Because of this, the government created a platform that gives light to every parent's nightmare to cure and save their sons and daughters from the disease. Meanwhile, Ruby turns a year older and spends her birthday with her parents. Her mom realizes that with the current situation they're in, this could be Ruby's last birthday. On the night of her birthday, while both of her parents are asleep, Ruby sneaked into their room and guaranteed that she'll be fine, that no one can take her away from them. While she's holding her mother's hand, she heard a loud thud and a bright light flashed right in front of her. She was frightened. The following day, she woke up with a headache and approached her mom in the kitchen, hoping that her mom would take care of her. Unfortunately, her mother did not recognize her. She was certain that Ruby was not her daughter. Instead of taking care of her daughter, her mom escorted Ruby to the garage. She locked her out. Ruby, not understanding what's happening, pounds the door and begs her mom to let her in. In less than a minute or two, the garage door opened. Two men in a yellow suit approached her and took her to the bus. It was just the beginning. While they were on a convoy, Ruby realized that the government was not afraid of the EN. The government was afraid of them, and to control the contagious growth of the survivors, those who survived the contagious disease were sent to a concentration camp. With Ian, you either die, or you'll be sent to the Thurmond Air Force Base. It was where she first witnessed what the survivors can do and how powerful they can be. The doctor first explained to Ruby that each of the kids has an assigned color that corresponds and indicates their disorders. Green for basic enhanced intelligence, blue for kinetic abilities, Gold for those who can manipulate electricity and the rarest of the group, reds and oranges, who can both be dangerous and lethal. Children falling under these colors are eliminated immediately. The system detected that Ruby's an orange. Without a second thought, the doctor grabs the syringe, uncaps the needle, and runs towards the little girl. He was ready to terminate Ruby. Ruby runs to the door to save her life. Unfortunately, the door is locked. The doctor grabbed Ruby's little arm to inject the syringe. As he was about to inject it, Ruby held the doctor's wrist telling him that she's one of the smart ones, that she's a green. The doctor changed the data, switching Ruby's color from orange to green. This makes her the only kid under the lethal group in the concentration camp. Six years later, while working on the combat boots, Captain McManus noticed that she was not doing her job right. He approached Ruby and started telling her that she was not smart enough to be a green. After working, the management conducted a frequency test for everyone. The frequency test would determine if there are any mismatches or if children are hiding their true abilities. After the test, Ruby finds herself cuffed in a hospital bed. The attending physician, Dr. Kate Begbie, started asking questions to assess and diagnose Ruby. Before leaving, Dr. Begbie intentionally leaves a note to Ruby. Ruby ran for her life towards the boiler room where she will meet Kate. To help Ruby escape, Kate handed Ruby new clothes and instructed her to play along as Dr. Rogers, who was sick and who completely zoned out while on duty. While they are about to pass through the gate, Captain McManus stops them for inspection. McManus asks Dr. Rogers to take off the mask to verify her identity. Dr. Rogers refused to follow the order. Due to the security breach, Dr. Begbie was forced to roll down the back window for McManus to double check Dr. Rogers' identity. As the captain takes a hold of her shoulder, Ruby turns around immediately and holds the captain's wrist. She started controlling McManus' mind, allowing them to move along. After six years, Ruby sees scenic views and breathes fresh air. While on the road, Ruby noticed that the places they passed through were empty. Dr. Begbie explained that most people left for work and the kids who survived the EN were either held captive or killed. Knowing what the government can do, Kate gives Ruby an emergency tracking device in case Ruby needs help. Kate and Ruby meet Rob at the gasoline station. Rob, who happened to be Dr. Begbie's love interest, will help them switch cars and lead them to the league. Ruby accidentally tripped. Rob grabbed her hand to save her from falling to the ground. Ruby sees a vision of Rob's past. 
She let go of his hand immediately. Inside the gas station where Ruby is supposed to change clothes, Ruby meets a mute little girl named Zoo, a goad. Zoo, thinking that Ruby is one of the tracers, started showing her abilities to frighten and drive Ruby away. Ruby, who is a little bit suspicious of Rob, asked for help and followed Zoo to Betty, the minivan. Ruby managed to escape from Rob and Kate successfully. Ruby and Zoo were later joined by Charles, a green, and Liam, a blue. While they're on their way to get supplies, Lady Jane's car swiftly approaches their minivan. The tracker quickly drifted and started tailing, bumping, and shooting them. But it was not just Lady Jane who was chasing the group. Rob's car was also following them. Liam, who has telekinetic abilities, controlled nature and started breaking the roads. Lady Jane's car crashed into the river while Rob's car was blocked by a tree. The following day, while they were scraping the van's name, two tracers showed up. But instead of holding them captive, the tracers just left. Liam, thinking that Ruby is a green, was clueless about what happened, but it was Ruby who controlled their minds. They then head to the mall for supplies. Zoo then uses her powers to light up the mall. While they were shopping, they saw a message written, Get out. The people inside the mall started using their abilities against Ruby and Liam. They were tossed into the air. There was a misunderstanding. The people who tossed them thought that Ruby and Liam were tracers. As they spend the night at the mall, Liam searches for answers. He wanted to know who, how, and where to find the slip kid. But no one is giving her any answers for all the kids' safety. Thanks to Ruby's psionic ability, they now have a clue, E-D-O. Charles then figured out what EDO is. It's not a place, nor a person, but a frequency. EDO 540. At daybreak, they left the mall and headed to Salem, Virginia. They were taking Ruby home. For six years, all Ruby wanted to see is her family, but she knows what will happen if she gets into their house. Her parents would still not recognize her. She's a total stranger to them. Because of what Ruby did on the night of her 10th birthday, her parents lost their beloved daughter and Ruby lost her sweet and loving family. As Liam and Ruby head back to the minivan, Lady Jane makes a surprising attack on them. Ruby was hit by the gun's butt and Lady Jane uses the white noise to disable Liam's power. After cuffing Liam, Lady Jane checks Ruby. When she clasps Ruby, Ruby holds her wrist and commands her to drop the keys, apologize to Zoo, and vanish forever. For safety reasons, Liam, Charles, Ruby, and Zoo decided to leave Betty behind. They traveled on foot to EDO. As they reached the place, they found out that Slip Kid is the president's son, Clancy Gray. EDO is a happy place for people like them, until Charles and Ruby realize that the place is horrible. Everyone has a task to do and is forced to work. Everyone is controlled by Clancy. Dismayed, they decided to leave without them knowing that Clancy set them up. They will eventually be turned over to Captain McManus. Clancy beats Liam to find out how Ruby would react and what she will become. Clancy is really pushing Ruby to her limit. Then she started burning the site. Ruby, being the only orange in the group, gathers herself and faces Clancy, while Liam, Charles, and Zoo save the others. Ruby started controlling Captain McManus's team to be on her side, but Clancy is too powerful. He countered Ruby's psionic ability and the armed forces started shooting each other. The unbeatable Clancy, who was interested in Ruby, started playing mind games with Ruby. But instead of falling into the trap, Ruby took the chance to control the pilot's mind and crashed the chopper towards Clancy. The crash caused a huge explosion. Charles assisted Ruby to safety. Unfortunately, Charles was badly hurt. It is now Ruby's turn to save Charles. She pressed and activated the tracker that Kate gave her. The following day, the League showed up and brought them to their safe house. Charles was taken to the hospital. Liam, who is not a fan of the League and a major security risk, was kept in a secured room while Ruby, Rob, and Kate had a feisty confrontation. Finally, Ruby agreed to be on their side in one condition. The League needs to let go of Liam. To guarantee that Liam will leave the League and Ruby, Ruby erased herself in Liam's memory. Liam leaves the house with his backpack full of supplies, cash, and a new ID to start his journey on the road. While Ruby took the courage to step up and take full responsibility to lead the pack in creating a better place and in protecting their greatest cause, their family. What are your thoughts about the movie? Be sure to check out our other recaps here.